Sam Lowe here for Green Blood Boxing. Absolutely delighted to be joined by Black Thunder himself, Kevin Ajargo. Kevin, how's it going, mate? Yeah, not too bad. I'm all good, thanks. Um, just home from from a uh, good session up in my amateur club there, but yeah, I'm all good. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Um, we'll get into things like training, and of course, but um, obviously you've had some really big news over the last week. You've signed a promotional deal with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing. I mean, first of all, just tell me how you're feeling. Like it's a it's a big move, right? Yeah, I'm, listen, I'm on top of the world at the moment. Um, it's obviously a dream come true for me to be with a, a massive boxing stable like uh, Matchroom. So I'm I'm chuffed and delighted uh, that that I've signed a new promotional deal, and um, it's a massive step forward in my career. One hundred percent. Um. Obviously, you uh, your contract ran out with uh, with Frank Warren, and and obviously Eddie Eddie approached you as I suppose approached your your new manager Paul Reddy as well, right? Um, what is it though for you that stands out about Matchroom? Like, what is it that Matchroom maybe brings or offers you that maybe other promoters, and not necessarily just Frank Warren, who was with, who we were with um, previously. But but all other promoters, what is it that Eddie brings to the table that maybe the others don't? Um, I feel like Eddie gives you the best um, opportunities. Um, I mean, in, in terms of me and, and what we've planned and um, what's set out for me, it was a no-brainer. Uh, in terms of bring me back home, promote me back in Belfast, um, which was kind of in in the um, in the deal and and what he what he wanted to do for me, so. It's listen. Eddie needs no introduction. He's he's an unbelievable promoter, um, and I feel like he gives his fighters the best opportunities, gets them the best fights, gets them the right fights, and um, he's he just knows how to promote a fighter. Do you know what I mean? No matter what level they're at, he's just he's got he's got an unbelievable kind of. How do I explain it? He's he's got an unbelievable like. He just he, he knows the right words to use. Do you know what I mean? In, in terms of promoting fighter and it's he just sells fights so well and and, and sells fighters so well and, and he backs them so for me it was a no-brainer saying with, with Matrim listen it, if you look at their stable and how well he's done with his top fighters um, it's something that I wanted to be involved with and I've always kind of wanted to be with with Matrim so uh, I was chuffed to sign a deal with him Ass. Um yeah you say like you kind of I suppose probably for a while you've wanted a match. For a while, Matchroom has probably been a very attractive option, and I feel like that's probably not just just for you, but for for most fighters, and um, probably a lot because of Eddie, but perhaps maybe because of the zone as well. How much of a part of your thinking or your kind of decision making was the zone part of the deal? Um, of course, one of the things that we know about as well, or one of the things that Eddie has kind of consistently talked about, is the money that the zone bring to the table. Maybe there are better opportunities to earn more, etc. Um, and maybe also just opportunities alongside the zone with Eddie just to be, like you said, pushed and really pushed into the limelight maybe a bit more. Um, was that a factor in your decision? Yeah, definitely. I remember someone tweeted me a, a while back and, and saying, uh, you got to earn with Hearn. And I feel <laughs> like that's that's very true. Um, listen, with, with the zone and the money situation, I feel like fighters get paid um, the right, right amount. And Certainly, in my deal, I'm 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 on a lot lot better deal than I was previously on financially, okay. um, and just it gives you the opportunity to to fight in different countries. Do you know what I mean? It, like Eddie brings um UK fighters over to America, Spain, um they've been doing a lot a lot of uh fights in Italy and stuff like that. So you can, it gives you opportunity to box all across the world and and build yourself as a worldwide fighter rather than just being known in Ireland and the UK. So that was very appealing to me and um. Being on being on the zone, I can do that. Do you know what I mean? I can go away to America, and it's something that we've talked about. So I mean, uh, I'm an Irish fighter that can fight in, in the states and some something like St. Paddy's Day or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. Um. So that was that was very appealing to me, and um, it's something that I, I want to do. I want to not just fight in the UK and, and back home. Obviously, fighting in Belfast is my main priority, but I also want to explore the world and and, and fight in different venues across the world. Hundred percent, and that is that is a very like logical and obvious kind of big attraction you know the, the as you say that ability to box around the world and uh, 
and because he promotes loads of different fighters and loads of different regions, it's I suppose it's more opportunities, you know, and um, more possibilities, more different types of fights. Um, one fighter that I'm not sure if he's under contract with Matchroom necessarily, but um, fighting on the Dazon Italy shows is the European middleweight champion Matteo uh, Lignani. Is it Lignani? Lignano? I have it written down here somewhere. Signani, Signani. Um, is that a kind of a, is that a matchup that you're looking at? Is that something like, uh, do these things kind of come up in the discussions when you, when you, you know, you meet with Eddie, you discuss a deal with your manager? Is it kind of, is that a name that maybe came up? Um, and, and, and a route, you, you said recently that you're not really interested in the British route. So is that that kind of Signani route and that link that he has with Matrim, is that a route? Um, it's definitely a route. I, I actually don't know who that fighter is. I'm not a, I'm not <laughs> great with uh, sticking with um, the current middleweights at the moment. Uh, I just focus on myself. I don't watch anyone else but myself. I don't watch who's, who's in my weight. Um, as I, obviously, as I go through the ranks, I'll have to be keeping an eye on, on yeah. certain fighters and, and what they're doing. But um, it's definitely an avenue that we're looking to go down. Um, we've, we've made it clear that we don't want to go down the British route. Um, that's not an objective for me. Uh, but it's definitely a potential fight if he's still if he's still champion whenever it's my time yeah. um, to fight for a European title. I mean, that's that's kind of the route we want to go down. We want to get world ranked, pick up an intercontinental or a international belt and, and a fight or two and um and then push on to maybe European level. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, he's actually on, I believe it's this weekend on the zone, defending his European title. So maybe you can keep a little eye out for that. Tune in. But um I'll definitely have to tune in. Yeah, you'll have to now, man. Um, but like in general what discussions have there been about your progression and how they want to move you? Um, it seemed like with Frank, and again, not to kind of throw shade or anything, but it just seemed like it was a little bit slow and you'd be out of the ring maybe for longer periods than maybe you wanted to be. Um, maybe the opposition wasn't being stepped up as often as you could, but there are other factors involved in that as well, which we actually talked about before. So what were the discussions like with Eddie in terms of your progression? How fast you want to move? The type of fighters? Maybe there were some names discussed. You know, what kind of levels are you looking to to step up to, and how quickly? Um, well, listen, I've been active or inactive for the last year, mm. and like you say, that with with Frank, there was no real structure to when I, when I'll be out or how long or like how many times a year I'll be out. So, um, with Eddie, we sat down and we've, we've planned out the next four fights in terms of dates and stuff like that and we'll just take it um, one fight at a, at a time um, I'm not too sure how I'll fight next but I'm sure it'll be a step up um, what we've what we've talked about is being getting getting a belt getting more, uh, world ranked and pushing on to, to kind of European level um, obviously coming back home and, and fighting in Belfast has um, been discussed potentially going away and fighting in the States has been discussed and I think Eddie's main objective is to kind of get me out to the general public more so than just the boxing fans, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he, he, he mentioned um, that on on social media, there was a lot of boxing fans that, that knew, knew me and said it was a great sign and stuff like that, but he wants to build me into a kind of worldwide yeah. um, star and and let everybody know who I am, do you know what I mean? I think... Yeah, like um, mainstream, maybe, but perhaps a little bit more mainstream, right? Exactly, it's the boxing mainstream. Fans. Exactly, and... Um, and he'll get me the opportunities and he'll promote me the best to do that. So that's, that's been talked about. And um, like I've mentioned before, I've, I've been, I feel like I'm boxing's best kept secret. And um, I think he kind of feels that feels the same. So listen, I've been inactive for 20, since COVID really, I've only had three fights. You know what I mean? In the last two years, it's, it's not a great deal of fights. So um, we'll get out before Christmas um, against a, a, a decent opponent and, and, and then we'll take it from there, see what level I'm at, see what stage I'm at my career. I mean, I feel like I'm 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 still learning a lot, still maybe need one or two more learning fights. Um I'm I'm like I mentioned earlier on in, a, in another interview that I'm I'm a name fight novice, you know what I mean? I'm 24 years old, so I've still got a lot to learn. I've still got I've still got to step up through the ranks and there's something to be learned at every level in boxing. You can't you can't skip levels, you know what I mean? Definitely. Um and I'm not looking to do that, I'm not looking to jump in the deep end, I'm not looking to be thrown in the deep end, but I do want to be stepped up. Yeah, hundred percent. And we have talked about that before, like that you're you're in no real rush because you're you are obviously still quite young, and there's plenty of time. And obviously, you still need you need those fights, I suppose, so that you can kind of see different styles and kind of figure out how, who you are and kind of keep working on things. Um, 
but one thing that I'm really interested in, you kind of touched on it there, obviously saying like, you believe you have believed for a while that you're kind of like boxing's best kept secret or, or at the very least one of them, which seems apparent, especially to, I suppose, like we're biased as Irish fans, but when we watch you fight, it's, it looks to be quite apparent. Right. But when someone like Eddie Hearn, who's obviously like, he's debatably bigger than most of the boxers in terms of his notoriety, his, his influence in the game. Right. When someone like him is kind of singing your praises and, uh, and like you said, seems to agree with you, in terms of being like boxing's best kept secret is that, you know, it looks like there's potential for you to be one of, if not the next big superstar, you know what I mean? He's looking, obviously he wants to box you back in Belfast, grow it, grow, um, grow the fan base there. Does that bring kind of pressure? Like the, what, what does that make you feel when you, when you think about that? Is that, is it pressure or is it something that you think now that's exactly what I'm built for that? That's exactly what I want. It's exactly what I want. Listen, I'm in this game to test myself and to prove to myself that I can be a world champion. I want to be Ireland's first black world champion. So, listen, there's always going to be pressure, but there's never going to be as much pressure as I put on my own shoulders. No yeah. one's pressure uh, expectations of me will surpass my own expectations of me. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. there, there's always going to be pressure, but at the same time, I don't feel like it's pressure. This is what I do. This is my job. I've been doing this since I was seven years old. I'm, I'm, I'm living my dream. I'm... I'm I'm in a sport that I love, do you know what I mean? Not many people get to do, a, do my job is something that I love doing, do you know what I mean? It's, it's my hobby, it's my, my job, do you know what I mean? And yeah. um, I don't, I don't feel pressure, do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I just, I can go in there and when, once I'm in the ring, I can, I, I just enjoy it, do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not like, oh, I'm putting so much pressure on to perform or to uh, impress, I, I'm I'm in there to impress myself. Do you know what I mean? I'm not in there to. Yeah. Ultimately, yes, you have to impress the fans, and you you want to kind of make a name for yourself and have knockouts and stuff like that. But my main priority is to impress myself. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't focus on anyone else's pressure or um, expectations of me. I, I focus on my own because I feel like once you start doing that, you're coming out of your comfort zone, and some people don't know how to deal with that. So I don't focus on pressure, but at the same time, I've mentioned before, pressure creates demons, and. Uh, I feel like the bigger the occasion, the the better I'll perform. <laughs> Class, good answer. That's a good answer. That one. <laughs> um, yeah, it's an interesting. I mean, it's a it's a really great mindset to have. You know what I mean? That uh, yeah, like that nobody can put pressure on on you that you don't already kind of in a way put on yourself. Like in terms of ex- expectations. Um, exactly. Listen, I want to be a world champion, and if if that's not enough pressure on my shoulders, then it's not it's not a big enough goal. It's not a big enough dream for me. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. no one else's expectations of me will be more than my own. Yeah. hundred percent. So um, just to move on slightly, there's, I don't know if it's official yet. I don't think it's official, but there's obviously big talks of you going on the December 11th card, which is uh, going to be co-headlined by Katie Taylor and um, uh, Connor Ben. Jesus. I don't know. How do you forget Connor Ben's name? Like, um, <laughs> But yeah, obviously there's talk of you going on that card. Um, yeah, I mean, is that kind of how solid is that? Obviously, maybe you can't say too much. And how buzzing are you just to get out? <clears throat> and uh, what kind yeah, of opponent are we looking at? Are we looking at a good, a decent le- name or a decent level even? Or is it just kind of look, let's get a run out, a couple of quid before Christmas, under the lights again, and then let's start fresh in the new year? Um, yeah, let's not be on, on, on that card in, in Liverpool and what an honour it is to be making okay. the matchroom de- debut on Katie Taylor's on the card. 100%. Um, someone, I, someone I look up to in, in this, not just in, as an Irish fighter, but in the sport of boxing, you know what I mean? So um, I'll be out in, on the 11th of December and I've been in camp for the last 10 weeks, training hard and hoping for a date, do you know what I mean? Before I was even um, out of contact with Frank, before I even knew what, what my next step was, I, I was training hard. So thankfully I've got a date and I'll be out before the end of the year. Um, in terms of, of opponents, I don't know just yet um, who, the, who they've got lined up or potential opponents, but it'll be, I'm sure it'll be a step up from my last fight. Um, I'm, I want step ups um, from each fight. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be, I'm, I think I've fought three or four journeymen in my career in terms of people with negative records um, out of nine fights. So every other opponent that I've faced has had a winning record. Um, and that's what, what I want. Do you know what I mean? I want people who are, when I come to fight and and come to test me, so I'm sure it'll it'll definitely be a test on the night. Yeah, definitely. Well, we hope so. Anyway, it'd be good to see. Uh, I mean, for you, obviously, it would be good. Um, but the fans, you know, and and I suppose me talking to you primarily, I'm a fan. I I know I can speak for the fans when I say 
we definitely want to see you in a in it like because every time you fight you seem to have no problems with the guy you know what i mean you work him out and you get you, you get to the victory so we definitely want to see you keep stepping up the levels um i want to if i can and obviously you don't have to answer and you don't want to but i want to kind of just look slightly at what are the perhaps best way to phrase this like what was it that maybe you weren't it might not even be relevant but what was it that i'm sure there was like another offer from frank right so what was not being offered maybe there that eddie did offer or what were the differences between because i think it's really interesting the fans like to know about stuff like this like what is it that matchroom can offer that other other promotions can't and i suppose particularly in this situation it's kind of frank versus eddie right so what was it that you felt maybe you weren't getting where Matchroom were able to step in and say, well, we can actually deliver that? Well, money aside, titles aside, and, and whatever, however many fights a year aside, um, my main objective was to fight in Belfast. Um, that, had to, that had to be agreed. Um, and I had a couple options on the table. We, tried to, we negotiated with Frank. Um, I had two, three other promoters um, looking to sign me, and Eddie wanted to commit to um, building me back in Belfast and, and bringing me back home next next year to fight in Belfast. And we got negotiation, uh, we got a deal done in 20, 24, 48 hours. Um, as soon as they committed, they said they'd commit to bring me back to Belfast. It was a no brainer. Um, it was something that we discussed with Frank, and he, he didn't want to commit to that. So um, that was that made my decision very easy. Other, other than Eddie being an unbelievable promoter and, and having an unbelievable stable and, and matching being amazing. Um, it was Belfast, Belfast, Belfast. And my one of the main reasons why I signed with my management group and Paul Reddy was he has the same vision, same goal as me. Before the one of the first things he sat down and said to me was that what I want to do is I make my main priority is to build you back in Belfast and make you a superstar back home. And that's what I want. So um, that was the main objective in terms of signing with Matt Truman and, and as soon as they said they'd commit to that, it was a no-brainer. Yeah, but I suppose the other parts of the deal were also really good. So that was the kicker. Like, that was the, the, the biggest exactly. difference, right? Yeah. Exactly. And, and do you know what? I would have I settled for less money to come home and fight in Belfast. And that, that's, that's the truth. I, I would have settled for less money. But if you can't buy in to bring me back home and, and promote me back in my hometown, then there's no real point of me being with you that you know what I mean it, it doesn't really make sense what 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 is the point of me fighting across the water yes I can kind of get learning fights and fighting different venues and, and stuff like that but my fan base is in Belfast if you look at Carl Frampton he did the best went away from the start of his career um fought away in England at the start of his career and then come back home and, and built big nights back home in small venues and then gradually worked up to um the Odysseys and then and then stadium fights and, and that's my plan. Yeah, 100%. Um, it does seem like the option, especially in a city like Belfast and a small country like Ireland, it's um, if you get it right, you can really get the backing of the people and it seems to be the way to go. It seems to be a bit of a no-brainer. Um, and of course, we do have, like you have that kind of template of what Carl did. Um, but there has been other good fighters. Now, no one at the, well, there's been one, I suppose, at the level of Carl more like relatively, which was Ryan Burnett, right? Unified Bantamweight champion. Didn't seem to be anywhere close to the draw that uh, that Carl was. You also have a lot of other big names. I mean, Belfast boxing, Irish boxing, but you have to say Belfast boxing for the most part is absolutely booming. I mean, even with the likes of Tommy Mack, who was European champion, just lost his European title. I mean, that's a huge title. Tyrone McKenna. I mean, you've got a lot of big names coming out of, of Belfast, but we haven't seen a ticket seller anywhere close to Carl. So what do you think separates you from everyone else who's kind of operating at a high level at the moment in, uh, in, in Belfast? Well, well, I feel like Ram Burnett was probably brought back to Belfast, even though he was relatively young and, and won world titles in his mid-20s. I think he was brought back to Belfast a bit too late um, to promote his career. Yeah. Um, You've got Mick Conlon who's selling out the Falls Park 10,000 people. Yeah. Um, who who's, does very, very well. But I think the thing that separates me is I'm a good looking kid. I can fight. I've got a story. 
and I, I'm always in exciting fights. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm a I'm a decent talker, um, and I I let I, I can I back up what I say. Do you know what I mean? And um, I, I don't know. I've I've been told I'm a very legable person, and uh, I'm a very I've got that kind of fan friendly fight style. So it it sells. You know what I mean? I get on I get on with a lot of people in Belfast and a lot of um people on both sides of the community, and that's something I want to build. I want to bring big big nights back to Belfast and bring the community together. I think boxing is one of the only sports that does that. Um, both sides get get behind their fighters and and put puts all the kind of religious religious and political side of things yeah. to the side and 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 back back their fighters. So Carl did that best, and that's something that I want to replicate and 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 um, do not just because Carl loves it, but just because I get so much support from both sides of, of the fence, and um, I feel like my fans deserve big nights back in Belfast, and and for me to pr- produce big nights back in Belfast. Hundred percent. I think t- to the, the the biggest thing that stood out to me of what of what everything you just said there, which is something I was actually going to say, uh, was likability, and the other thing was kind of well general ability. I mean, it's early days in your career, but you kind of, I suppose, you're a fighter that when we look at you, actually fight, um, you know, as in physically what you're doing in the ring, it very much looks like you can go very far, right? I feel like Carl was really similar. Carl was kind of, he was very, very likable guy, you know, not particularly, uh, like, as you said, political, he wasn't being divisive. So he was, he was already set up to kind of, to join the communities rather than segregating anyone. And then when you watched him fight, he was excellent. He was good to watch. He was exciting. He was style like he was, flashy you know what i mean he looked when you watched him he looked apart so they seem to be the two things that stick out to me that kind of likability and um and that in the ring kind of slickness and style you know what i mean um which is interesting and maybe not to say that the other guys who are operating at the moment don't have those things but maybe they're the two things that uh that help you to stand out for sure man um i would did want to touch on paul reddy actually because you have had a change of management you were with MTK before, right? I was racking my brains there was, earlier on. No, I was a... Uh, you were Francis managed by Warren. Frank Way. Francis Warren, so Frank's son. Francis. So apologies for that. Um, and I'm no, actually, you're okay. I'm not even going to put that in, to be honest, because that was a bad mistake. Uh, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of people a lot of people thought I was with MTK, and I think they just suspected that because I'm an Irish fighter, but no, I was, I was never with MTK. I should have known that, and I don't know why I, don't know why I thought that, but I, for some reason it was in my head. But um, anyway, what um, yeah, well, I suppose that now it's it's a little bit more makes a little bit more sense. It's a logical move away from the Queensbury setup, right? But um, what about Paul Reddy and that management stable kind of uh, attracted you to them? You kind of touched on it already, but maybe a little bit more of a a, a full uh, answer, if you like, in terms of all the aspects that drew, drew you to Paul Reddy. Yeah, do you know what? Um, I was coming out of my management contract, and to be honest, I always wanted to move away. I thought I wasn't being managed properly, um, and I was willing to stay with Frank at the time. Um, but once I was out of management contract, um, Paul heard through the grapevine that I was going to be a free agent, kind of, and um, he, he he got in contact. Um, one of the things that stood out for me is that he made an effort. Um, he, he flew over to Belfast to see me. Um, Flew over to Belfast to see me. We sat and had a chat. It wasn't when he flew over. It wasn't necessarily to talk about business. It was to get to know me as a person. Me to get to know him as a person. Mm. Um, and the first line of business for me is if I can't get on with you, I don't like you as a person. Then it's not going to work, and I'm wasting my time. And I feel like Paul's the same. And um, we just clicked straight away. Um, since since that day, I've spoke to Paul every single day without fail. He, he checks up with me in the morning. Um, he does endless things for me in, in, in terms of sorting my medical out, um, sponsorship, getting getting um, social media or certain media platforms to do interviews with me, just everything a manager should do. Yeah. Um, and some things that a manager shouldn't do or isn't in their job role, he, he does. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He, he comes down to the gym, he comes down to see me once a week, whether it's to watch me train, to go for a coffee. He puts that effort into coming to see me and, and spending time with me and getting to know me and anything I need, knowing that I can rely on him and take the pressure off my shoulders. Um, 
so even like even tonight I was going to he, he rung me I was kind of having a little nap and he, he rung me and I was just a bit groggy but he um he, gave, he sent me a voice note after and I was on my way to the gym and he sent me a voice note after I was like you didn't see yourself on the phone is everything okay maybe I'm, I've got it completely wrong do you know what I mean just small stuff like that he, he cares about his fighters do you know what I mean yeah um obviously he's in a business and he's there to bring fighters to the top level and, and make money and, and stuff for himself but he genuinely cares about his fighters and that's that stands out for me when it, something with me is in just in life if if I don't feel like you're genuine I, I won't be anywhere near you and Paul is a genuine person I can and I can say that hand on heart and if things didn't which I, I, I think they will and I know they will and, and I hope they do business ways at long term I hope to be with um, STN and, and Paul I think didn't work out we we somehow went our, our different ways I know that I would still have a friend in Paul um, so that, that was a big factor for me and it made, do you know what it was probably the easiest deal to make and I, and I didn't seek any kind of other offers I had a, a lot of different offers on the table from different managers um, one in the semi and very good managers and I didn't even give them the, give them the time of day really because I was so set on being impressed by Paul. And not not only that, he he's Calum Smith's advisor. He's um he's Cal Yafai's advisor. He's worked for Matchroom in, in matchmaking for five six years. Yeah. Um, he and 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 as as well as that, he's building a great stable. With STN have Sandy Ryan, um, Dalton Smith, myself, and there's a couple other good good fighters are about to sign. So Some um, the names there, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um. It's a team that I wanted to be a part of, and uh, and I I have full belief and confidence in, in Paul and manage my career to the very top of the sport. Hundred percent, and like the, again, the one thing that kind of sticks out is the pedigree. Uh, you know, he has he has pedigree. You exactly. know, he has he's been involved at the high, high level, uh, the highest level. Obviously, has those those names. Um, hundred percent, man. That's a. Uh, that's nice. Like that's I'm I'm happy for you because that's that's massive, isn't it? Like that's kind of genuinity, feeling like someone actually cares about you and has your back. Because in a in a business like the boxing business, I mean, look, the stories we hear, you know, about the kind of there's sharks not, that there's are not out a lot there of, stuff. Do you know there, what I mean? There's not a lot of genuine people in this in this sport. If you get a genuine person, keep them keep them close keep to you. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and I can I can say, I mean, I've probably known Paul since. September, August, September, and on heart, hand on heart, um, I can I can say that he's he's a genuine person and um and a and a very very good manager. Class, well, I'm very pleased with you, man. You seem to be because one of the one of the great things as well is like when you can make a decision that you're so behind yourself that you're so 100 percent certain on that I feel like that gives a lot of uh peace of mind you know what i mean like you're not exactly. kind of you're not worrying about anything you're not kind of going oh well you know it seems good but you know maybe this or maybe that you're kind of like no this is fucking this is perfect this is right for me and i don't have to worry about anything i can go training and i and i fully trust in this person to look after me and that they have my best interests at heart exactly and top notch that's that's 100 percent. like i feel like i've become so much more happier with with boxing and and the, and how my career is going just because of Paul and do you know what I mean a happy fed is a dangerous fed it takes a lot of weight off my shoulders and listen it's not always going to be smooth sailing and, and stuff like that but I know that as much as as much pressure there's on me he'll take as much pressure off me as possible and, and make things a lot easier for me so as long as I can just focus on fighting and uh, and improving and, and training hard then He'll he'll deal with all the other sides of of the the boxing side. Yeah, class man, hundred percent. Um, couple of couple of more things for you. Hopefully, I'm uh, I'm not running too much into your evening, stealing your time off you. But um, couple of names. I mean, you're kind of a fast rising middleweight. Your popularity and your I suppose not notoriety, but you're just going to get a lot more well known now over the next few months. You know what I mean? Signing at Matchroom in itself is going to be uh, something that kind of increases your popularity and your just again, as I say, people people knowing who you are. Um, as you kind of start to rise up the levels, as you become more popular, obviously there will be calls for for you to fight bigger names, and if you are going to be being brought back to Ireland, the, there always is. There's always that kind of uh, it's very sellable, right? Irish fighters against each other, a good Irish dust up. 
there's a few good names in and around the middleweight division. And I want to just throw, it's only like three or, well, there's a few, but there's three or four good names. And I want to see kind of who, if any of them, would you be interested in? I, I, probably not right now, but in the, in the coming months and in the future, right? So you've got Luke Keeler is coming back, obviously former WBO middleweight title challenger. Has a very a couple of very good wins, especially against Luis Arias, um, who's a good name in the States, has very good rankings. You've got Jason, obviously, who's gonna fight Demetrius Andre for the WBO title in a couple of weeks. And then you've got um Spike O'Sullivan, who's kind of a, a fan favorite in Ireland and also a big name in the States. And then even just to, to give a shout out to someone like who maybe you could fight sooner than those names, someone like Craig O'Brien, right? Who's a, a probably be a good step up um in the coming in the coming months, right? Is there any first of all, do any of them from the perspective of being Irish matchups, is that something that appeals to you and something that you would like to have? And then in terms of those names, um, are those names attractive as kind of as big fights, especially fights that can be put on in Ireland? Yeah, without doubt. Listen, um, the likes of the, the, the three that you named first, Luke, uh, Spike and, and Jason, they're a lot more experienced than me right now. Um, I mean, they've all been in high-profile fights and all very good fighters. Um, Jason, Jason is a is probably a fight that would appeal most because he's at the top. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I would love. Listen, although they, they he's in my way, and all three of them are in my way. Um, even Craig, I'm in com- competition with nobody but myself. So until until the day comes, I fight them. I'll always support them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I want to. Yeah. See, I, I, I want to see Jason win a world title. Um, as an Irish fan myself, I want to see Jason win a world title. Um, so yeah, listen, they're all appealing names, and, and maybe in a year or two, they could definitely be um, potential matchups. Someone like Craig O'Brien could be could be made within a year to eighteen months without without doubt. Um, but it's got to make sense for me and my team. It's got to obviously make sense, and um, if it's something that my team are confident and, and, and want me to go down that way. What do I do? I'm, listen, I'm a fight man. I'll fight anybody. Um, uh, this is what I do. I've done this since I was seven years old. So it's it's not about, will I fight him? Will I fight him? As long as it makes sense, without doubt. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'll, I'll fight. I'll, I mean, if it made sense to fight Canelo in the morning, I, I would fight him. Do you know what I mean? So um, I I would definitely be open to any of them names in, in a year or two time, yeah. Yeah. In terms of the kind of Irish dust up concept, is it something that appeals to you? Because like aside from the names, like because they're the names that are about at the moment, right? But aside from that, the kind of that that concept of like a big Irish dust up, a a, a local rival, a, you know what I mean, a national rival, is that a kind of a is that a narrative that appeals to you? Yeah, without doubt. Like I've mentioned, I don't want to go down the domestic route because I'm an Irish fighter. So of course, it would make sense for me to be excited to fight an Irish fighter and that's a that's a domestic dub, dust up for me do you know what I mean so yeah, yeah, yeah it definitely appeals to me and it, it definitely excites me to be in an in, in a all Irish um, showdown and and to do it back home in, in Ireland and give give the fans uh, a night for the history books you know what I mean so what about yeah, exactly. you and Jason in a you and Jason in a couple of years for a world title maybe could be could be a big one me, me and Jason for a world title in, in an ever casement park or Pro park be the dream <laughs> selling out Kroger that's the dream and we leave it there Kevin because I've taken an awful lot of your evening so <laughs> you're all good <laughs> okay I need to stop promising that I'm gonna fucking only chat to you for a few <laughs> minutes because it's never gonna happen but I appreciate your time man you know I no appreciate it so. um look thank you very much um again I just want to say congratulations because this is a big move for you I'm looking forward personally as a fan of yours to seeing how you're moved and hopefully seeing you out more regularly, like, you know, in the ring in front of the cameras, because uh, you have been a, a hidden, a hidden talent for a while. And it's going to be nice to be, because as Irish boxing as well, I feel like I can speak on, on behalf of, of people in Irish boxing, that you're one of the guys that we want out there representing, re- representing the sport, you know what I mean? And uh, on the biggest stage now, it's going to be uh, not only great for yourself, but great for Irish boxing as well. So, congratulations man and again thank you so much for your time no problem at all thank you for having me on and thank you for the uh, congratulations and hopefully uh, listen I will be out more and, and hopefully I can put a performance on for the whole of Ireland 100% man
Perfect. Sam Lowe here with Kevin. Thank you very much. Green Blood Boxing. Thanks very much, Kevin.